for our first uh, part of this worksheet for the level four for our uh, communications graphics class, um, we're going to take a look at um, these tools that are listed here under the directions. And those should serve as a clue for you of what we'll do. So the align panel, the pathfinder panel, including the buttons, the unite and the minus back buttons are uh, the rotate tool and the duplicate command. Now, uh, just like the worksheet says is that we draw, we will draw together in class this graphic, and then you draw. You're going to have to take the skills that you learned from this section here and repeat this graphic uh, listed right here. So first thing, we got to go ahead and find these panels uh, which are not in your essentials that you're used to dealing with. So you're going to go to Window, and you're going to go to um, Pathfinder or Align. They come back to us together. It's this kind of one little mini panel and the transform is there as well. So there's your Align and there's your Pathfinder. So we're going to go ahead and draw some shapes here. I'm going to start off with just a circle, okay, using the ellipse tool. L is the keyboard shortcut. Now I'm going to hold down Shift to make sure it's a perfect circle and every time you see me float around like that I'm holding down Spacebar as well which allows me to float around an object while I'm drawing it. <clears throat> so I've drawn that object. Let me go ahead and clear out um, the, uh, the fill so you can see how it sits there on top. Now next thing, uh, let's go ahead and put some gears on this thing, um, the gear teeth. I'm going to do that with the rectangle tool. Now um, you have the advantage of having my drawing uh, right there to kind of copy on top of, but when I'm sitting here trying to draw this thing, I might have something like this that's a little bit off center. So uh, I want to make sure that this object is centered to this object. So we select an effect. We always select both objects before we try to affect them. And uh, I'm going to take care of this with the align panel. Now the align panel has some uh, pretty easy things here. They, the, the icons make sense. They do what you think they should do. So for instance, this horizontal align left is going to take a common line between the two objects and glue them kind of to that line, kind of smack them together all the way there to the left. Okay, um, This one here, uh, kind of called this the marshmallow on a stick button sometimes in class. If I click on that, it's going to center to one another. Now you'll also notice that it's centered it to the entire page. So there's some controls that we want to deal with when working with our line panel. I'm going to click on the flyout menu and in DID2 you certainly need to become more aware of these flyout menus on these different panels. And I go to sh show options and then on the align to down here in the lower right hand corner that pops up, I want to align this um, to these different options. Align to selection means that the center, the selection is going to center itself like that. And that's not bad, but it moved my circle, which we already know is in the right place. The other one is aligned to a key object. So what is a key object? A key object is when I have an object that is in the right place, like I circle, and we make it the boss of the selection. So I go back, I'm not holding down any keys with my left hand. I'm just going to go back and click on the circle. And you see how the outline becomes thicker, a red circle there? Um, that it means that it's a key object. So if I go to do that marshmallow on a stick button, the horizontal align center, um, it's going to center to our key object. So now we know that this rectangle, even though it doesn't match my rectangle below, is exactly on that circle. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and rotate that object all the way around um, so we have our different um, objects here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 360 degrees divided by 10 gear teeth would be 36 degrees uh, for each of the gear teeth. And that's going to be important for us. I'm going to get the rotate tool and I'm going to locate the center of the circle that I've drawn here. And you can see the little green smart guide is telling me that that's the center. So I have the rectangle selected. I pull this rotate down to the center and I'm going to option or alt click in the center. And that brings up our dialog box for the rotate. So what we've done is we've defined this little center here as where we're going to rotate. And I'm going to go ahead and type in 36 and click on preview. You can see that when I preview it, it rotates it 36 degrees in this direction, in the counterclockwise direction. Now I don't want to just click OK because that will move the object I already have drawn. I want to click copy and that's going to create an additional copy of that rectangle. Next I need to duplicate that movement all the way around. So we have this handy little command here in Illustrator 
uh, called duplicate, command dupe. So I'm going to go command D all the way around. It's going to repeat it all the way around until I have all 10 of my gear teeth. Now, next thing I want to do here is combine these all together. I have 10, 10 gear teeth plus a circle, so 11 objects that really need to act the same. Now, in DID 1, we learn how to use the uh, Shape Builder tool, which is very handy, but it becomes tedious when you have a lot of shapes you have to combine. The Pathfinder, what it does is kind of a shortcut to that Shape Builder tool. And it's an older tool. It's been around for a long time, while Shape Builder is a little bit newer in Illustrator. So I'm going to click on the Shape Mode Unite, and it's going to unite all of my overlapping shapes into a single object. And if I fill it in there, you can see that's what I have. Now, on our screens, we've had this little black triangle show up from time to time. As I move it around, for some reason, that black triangle follows us around, but it's not actually there. It's something on with the way that it's being drawn. Not sure why. So let me move that back into place, and hopefully the black triangle doesn't come with us. Uh, if it does, we're just going to ignore it. It won't print or affect anything. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and cut out a hole in the center of this gear. Now, if you want to, you can turn off the layers so you can actually see how the size of the hole. That's not that important to me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hold down Shift, draw um, a high-quality circle right there. Then I'm going to use my Shape Builder, I'm sorry, my Align Panel again. I'm going to make the main shape, which is in the right place. I'm going to make that my key object by clicking on it. And again, same button. I'm going to horizontal align center. But I'm also going to do what I call the hot dog on a stick button, which is the vertical align center, and they, it is now totally aligned. Okay. So next thing, we want to go ahead and cut our hole into the object, and we do that uh, again with the Pathfinder. We could do it with the Shape Builder. You learned how to do that in DID 1, but in Pathfinder, the second button is the minus front button. So I click on that, and it cuts a hole in the object, and you can see that original drawing down below on that object now. All right, one last thing that we want to do is we want to um, work that lettering in there. Um, and so I'm going to type the letter M, and I'm going to stretch it out quite large. And I'm actually going to change my font here. Um, I used Impact on the original drawing. <clears throat> now, if I try to align this object, um, we have a space for the descender on our object, our text object, right? So this space in here is where the descender goes, and it's part of our text object. So if I try to align it, okay, you see how it kind of jumps like that? That's not really what we want. So we want to change that uh, text object to something as if we had drawn it with the, um, with the pen tool. So I'm going to right-click and go to Create Outlines, and it turns it into something as if I had drawn that with the pen tool with all those straight lines and angles. So now, uh, when I go to align this, again, key object, my both centerings there, and go ahead and connect both the M and the gear, and I'm going to use this with the Pathfinder, Unite, and it takes on the style of one of the objects, the object that's on top, so the black uh, fills in the whole thing, but it's a single object, as if I had drawn that with the pen tool, uh, taken lots of time with that, however, uh, we did this gear drawing very, very quickly um, by drawing smarter instead of harder. Now we draw. Now it's time for you to draw. Go ahead and figure out how to create these stars. Um, I will give you a hint. Um, the angle is going to be a little bit off because of something I did on the original drawing. Go ahead and use uh, the angle of negative 30 degrees when you go to draw uh, these stars in here. You'll need to use a line to align these things here. Make sure things are centered, 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 aligned to the left, aligned to the top, and aligned to the bottom uh, to make this drawing. And go ahead and show us your color skills by using three subtle colors to create a nice coherent color scheme.